Welcome to the ALSCO Uniforms It Pays to Keep Clean podcast. Join us as we spend time with ALSCO Chief Operating Officer Jim Kearns to discuss this season's theme, Growth is Our Water. In this podcast, we'll talk about observations from the field, celebrate big wins, and identify industry best practices. I'm your host, Dana Craig. Let's get started. Jim, we wanted to spend some time asking some questions from the field today. So we solicited a few people, mostly our regional managers, to see what they may may be interested in having you speak about. (coughs) And we'll sprinkle in a few questions here and there. But I wanted to start with, um, you know, conventional wisdom, of course, is that everyone knows that it takes more money to get a new customer than it does to keep an existing customer. And therefore, it makes sense to kind of leverage across all of the offerings that we have in a single customer. Do you have any good examples of where we we may have done that in a pretty amazing fashion that might spur others to try? Yeah. um, You know, we we recently went to a a resort on the West Coast, uh, west of Eugene, called if you're a golfer, you'll know this place called Bandon Dunes. In Eugene, Oregon. It's Oregon it's, coast. It's on the Oregon coast. Okay. So it's west of Eugene, about two hours. It's about a two hour drive. Beautiful part of the country, but it's a it's a destination uh, golf resort that is that has grown up over time. But, you know, I wasn't really uh, I didn't really know that it was a big account for us um, until I until I showed up there. I saw Alsco everywhere. ALSCO uniforms were in the starter shacks on the first aid kits. ALSCO uniforms were in all of the restrooms. It was in all of the restaurants. I mean, I've never seen so much ALSCO um, product. In, Did it in, affect your golf game? Like I played much of, better. Okay. Uh, played much better. <laughs> okay. um, so it, it was terrific to see. And, you know, I showed it to the caddies that we had. Um, I was just surprised. And then, you know, I talked with Bill Inge, the general manager, and turns out, no surprise, it's a big account of ours up there. But uh, you know, we're doing a terrific job up there, and it's it's it was really it was really great to see. I was so excited. I mean, I showed everybody, you know, all the different Alsco products I'm, that we had. We I'm even sure saw the driver. Um, well, there's actually two two RSRs that service that account. We saw them. I I got on the truck and introduced myself. Later, while I was out playing, my wife got on the truck and introduced herself uh, <laughs> to these guys and got a picture. <laughs> with them and and you know they've you know they were pretty excited about that at the branch and this picture i guess has been showed around to the branch that you know, making we the rounds making yeah. the rounds so but you know this is something we can do in all of our accounts right. right that's that's the beauty of it we can do first aid we can do all fresh that's target market business right we can do uniforms we can and do dust control and yeah. food and beverage mats i mean i've had mats everywhere so well it's kind of the while you were making the stop it's like going to a department store instead of a boutique or going to the grocery store instead of to the butcher baker candlestick maker you're making the most of that one stop by providing as much service as we can yeah, and our really stuff makes sense. you know uh, hats off to the eugene team that the the product um everything looked terrific there right. so um i was I was very proud of, of how we were, you know, how we were servicing that account. So that was exciting. Well, that's a great example. And I imagine there are others and hopefully For we sure. can, can continue to uh, concentrate on that. So next question, what's been the biggest challenge, do you think, in acquiring target market customers? Oh, that's a good question. And I think there's maybe hard to distill down to a single thing, but, um, you know, I, there's, there's lots of challenges. Um, it's a competitive it's a competitive marketplace, but I think, you know, really to me, it, it comes down to confidence, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the biggest challenge is I don't think that we have the confidence to go in, you know, and really get the healthcare business and really get, you know, the uniform business facility service. We can do it as well as anybody. Right. And, you know, once in, 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 in certain marketplaces, we do have a great deal of confidence and we go in and we sell it, we service it, we do everything right with it. And in some markets, you know, maybe confidence is not the right word, but we're, you know, we're reluctant or hesitant to to really go after it because we may be uncomfortable with how you service it, right. or, or we may be uncomfortable about, you know, what it takes to make those accounts profitable and all that sort of stuff. But I think we, I think that's been, you know, one of the biggest hurdles to right. to, to get so, more in target market. I think you may not be wrong about confidence, but then how do you combat against confidence? What makes people more confident in trying something new or different? 
Well, I think we just we have to get you know we have to get the the, the management teams out there to be supportive of it. Yeah. You know, take it take a chance on this stuff. You know, it may, you know, you can't learn how to service you know healthcare accounts or uniform accounts unless you tr do it right. Um, so. You know, get some good examples, train the people, uh, make sure that they understand how to service these accounts. Yeah. It's different than food and beverage. Sure. Um, but there's, you know, it, it, it just takes doing. You just have to practice, right? Practice, train, practice. Right. Receive uh, some feedback, solicit exactly. uh, feedback from somebody who does seem to have the confidence and know how sure. to do it. Yep. Uh, and I know as we're growing our sales force, too, we're naturally bringing in people who've had that um, that training already and that experience, either from a competitor of ours right. or in a different market. And so uh, those are great people also for us to right. you know, talk to and, and gain the confidence so you can go out there and really make your numbers yep. comfor comfortably, right? Okay, last question for you for today. Okay. Uh, so you've visited a lot of branches throughout 2024 at this point. I'm not sure what maybe 15, 18, somewhere right. in that, right? Are there common thing themes that you're seeing uh, that stick out kind of as best practices that maybe other branches should consider adopting? Um, yeah, and I, you know, and, and some of these are um, basic stuff, fundamental to our business, right? I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, branches that have a good safety record, mm -hmm. you know, they ha there's a correlation between that and retention, right? And so, um, you know, that's important. I'm seeing that 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 is a best practice. That's something we have to do everywhere. You know, one of the things that, you know, I, I'm seeing in our best branches is they go out full, right? Mm -hmm. They don't they don't spend all their day running shortages. It's not, you know, those branches make sure they go out full every day. It's not OK to, you know, run specials and go out short. It's not not part of their culture. So I think that's that's another best practice. And that kind of feeds back into retention, though, too. So if you just kind of follow the train, safety leads to retention. Retention leads to better consistency in outcomes in production, leads to full loads. You know, so mm -hmm. these things are not inter, um, independent of one another. Right. And I, you know, the other thing is, you know, that I'm seeing out there, you know, around, you know, customer retention is when you look at the service departments, our best service departments, the DMs are not out on routes, yeah. right? They're not running routes. Our best service departments, these guys have, um, these people, these RSRs have, you know, a lot of tenure, right? They've been in the business a long time. They sell, you know, they take care of their customers, right? And, you know, there is an attitude, um, you know, within the sales organization or within the branch organization, sales, operations, service, everything, that they're going to do whatever it takes to keep the customers. Um, if they're not going to subscribe to this idea that, you know, customers come and go, that's just right. inherent in our business. They're out really fighting for, you know, all of our customers. And, you know, it's clear when you see that in, in our branches that these folks are um, out doing whatever it takes to keep our customers. And that's what they have to do. It's going to be something different in with each customer, with each location, but sure. you got to, you got to do whatever it takes to, to make sure that we retain our business. Well, thank you. That's all our questions for today. We'll have more for you in the future. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for today's episode of the It Pays to Keep Clean podcast. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of ALSCO uniforms, where we explore the growth and challenges in our industry. Tune in next time for more industry insights, growth strategies, and tales from the field. If you've enjoyed our time together, please leave us a rating and review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you want to learn more about our services, visit us at ausco.com. From all of us here at the It Pays to Keep Clean podcast at Ausco Uniforms, thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay clean, and we'll see you in the next episode.